Okay, so we're going to look at 10.9, work as the product of two vectors. So I hope you guys are seeing now, we've been looking at different things. We've been looking at, let's see, we've been looking at friction and, um, and work and friction and how uh, we can decompose various contact forces into X and Y. We've looked at projectile motion and seeing how we solve it using X and Y components. And we've looked at collision and momentum and seeing how to solve these kinds of problems using X and Y uh, components. So I hope you're getting the idea now. We're seeing how to solve the problems that we already know how to solve, but how these problems are actually now in two dimensions. So we also want to look at work now as a product of two vectors. So before we, we know this, equation here, work is force times displacement. And actually these are two vectors. But what we've seen before though is that these two vectors were always pointing along the same axis. So either um, they're pointing in the same direction, which means you get positive work, or they're pointing in opposite directions, which means you get negative work. Okay? And work is a scalar value, but it's equal to the, the product of two vectors. Okay, but now what happens if these two uh, vectors are not pointing in the same direction? Uh, how do we calculate the work when they're not pointing in the same direction? So let's, let's look at an example of where this is happening. So if we've got a block sliding down an incline um, and we draw, remember work is done when a force the uh, a force uh, displaces a, blo a block at the point of application. All right. So let's look at the forces acting on this block. And to simplify it, we're going to uh, not consider friction. So friction is negligible. Okay. So what are the forces? Well, we've got gravity acting straight down. That's this force over here. Fg, earth on block. And we've got the normal force. Okay. And because it's accelerating, um, we have this kind of setup over here. We've got the, uh, the gravitational force and we've got the normal force. And if you do the head to tail of these two, you're going to get a resultant force over there, okay? Which is causing this block to accelerate. So we know the block is accelerating down there, I mean, along the incline. Now remember, or maybe, maybe you don't know this, but um, only the component, this is important, only the component of the force in, that is in the direction of the displacement, only that component of the force will do work. So as you can see, this force is broken up into its y and x, and so only this X component will do any work. It'll be this force, X component, times the displacement in this direction. And that'll be the work done. What we'll see is that this vertical component, this Y component, does not do any work on the, uh, on the block. It is only this horizontal component. Okay, so... What is this horizontal component, this X component? It's, FB, it's FEBX, which is equal to the gravitational force times sine theta. So, so remember, that's, that angle is theta. And if you do your trigonometry, you'll see that that angle there is theta. That's, we see that there. Okay? So F... This, that gravitational force sine theta, we're looking at that component, which is that component, is your x component. And that is equal to mg, which is your force, your gravitational force is mg, times sine theta. So that is the force, the component of your gra gravitational force that is acting in the same direction as your displacement. Now let's have a look at your displacement delta x. Okay? Remember, delta x, let's see, do they show it here? They didn't actually show it here. 
Do they show it down here at all? Okay, so there's my delta x. I know it says delta r, but let's just consider that is my delta x. That is my displacement. Remember, I, this is my x direction and the vertical, the wide, that the perpendicular direction is y. So delta x, look at this relationship. If you draw a triangle here, a triangle, that is my delta x, that is my delta, that is my height. Okay, let me see. Let me see if I can quickly do this. So if we've got this triangle here, remember that's a right hand triangle, the block moves from there to there, for example. That is my delta x. That's my right hand. And th this is h. And remember that this is theta. So h, that height, is delta x sine theta. Or delta x is h over sine theta theta. So I've got two things now. I've got my gravitational force EBX is equal to MG. What was that? Was it sine theta? Yes. Sine theta. Hold on, let me just make sure. I, I'm pretty sure. Um, yes. MG sine theta. Okay, so if I'm going to look at work done, it's equal to this force, FEBX times delta X, delta X, okay? And this is equal to what? It's MG sine theta times delta X, which is H over sine theta. And we, we know this, work done by gravity, the force of gravity is MGH, okay? MGH, that's the work done by gravity, if you want to do that, the force of gravity. So what we see here is this, this is what we want to see. What, this is what we want to take away, is that you've got this force of gravity down here, and you've got your displacement vector there. Okay, And what you see is one of two things. Either the work is, let me just rewrite it again, mg uh, sine theta, um, h over sine theta. Um, no. Anyways, I'm just, I just lost my train of thought, so, so ignore that. But the point is this, that... Um, it is only, it's either one of two things. I was trying to say this, but I've lost my train of thought. But it's either, it's either the component of the force in the direction of the displacement. So work is either the component of this force in the, di in the direction of this displacement, okay, times the displacement, or, this is what I was trying to, this is what I was trying to write, or work is equal to the force, that force of gravity, times the, com this, the displacement's component in that direction, delta x cos theta. That's what I want to show you. That's what I want to show you. So work is the component of this, this guy's component in that direction times that, or that guy's component in that direction times that. Okay, And what we see is that this is actually something called the scalar product or the dot product. So what this is, so work is basically F, the force, dot, the displacement, delta R. These are both vectors. It is the force vector dot the displacement vector. And you'll see that it, this is eventually what it becomes. What is this? It is the magnitude of F times the magnitude of your displacement times the cos of the angle between them. 
Okay? So that's exactly what we have over here. It is either the magnitude of the, that force times the displacement, times the component of this displacement in that direction, or it is the magnitude of the displacement times the component of that force in that direction. That is what the dot product does. It allows us to calculate the work done by multiplying two vectors. All right? So sorry that I confused you here, but this is, this is what I wanted to get at.